I'll be going through the benefits of the course, the drawbacks of the course, things I enjoyed about the course, things I did not enjoy about the course, and finally, some deciding factors that will help you determine whether or not further maths is a good fit for you. So first, let's talk about things I enjoyed about the course. So the biggest thing I enjoyed about the course was how interesting it was. So further maths over both years was easily the most interesting course I did out of all four. The other three being maths, physics, and economics. And the main reason for this is that you get introduced to fascinating new concepts. Literally everything you learn is completely new. And that's something I didn't have with my other subjects. And the fact you're learning completely new stuff makes it so easy for the course to be engaging and interesting. You know, for an example, when I was looking through a further maths paper before I started the course in year 11, literally, I didn't understand a single word of it. The only mathematical word which I thought rang a bell was vectors, and that was it. Everything else was completely new. And that made the course really enjoyable. Another big part of the course that makes it more enjoyable is the fact you get to choose your modules. And in the case of further maths, in the second year, you get to choose between further statistics, further mechanics, further decision, or further pure. And just for me personally, I didn't really enjoy decision maths. I had a taste of it at the end of year 12. It wasn't really my thing, so I didn't have to do it. Instead, I got to do statistics and mechanics. Okay, next is things I didn't enjoy about the course. And honestly, when it came around to planning this video, I had to think for so long about anything to fit in this section. And the reason for that is there's very few things I didn't enjoy about the course. The concepts are interesting, the way the course is structured is good, I think the exam papers are good. There's really not much I can think of that I didn't like about the course. Maybe the fact there are just some things you have to memorise, which I don't really like in maths in general, but that's very few cases. So altogether, there's not really much, if anything, I didn't like about the course. And now let's go on to benefits of studying A-level further maths. So the first thing is that it complements normal A-level maths, and I'll talk about it later on, but that's a good thing and a bad thing. In terms of how it's a good thing, it makes A-level maths a whole lot easier. As for me personally, there were things in A-level maths which I'd already learned in A-level further maths. For example, binomial distribution for second year of A-level maths, I'd already learned that in AS further maths, so it kind of made the course a lot easier and more manageable. A second benefit of studying A-level further maths is that it looks good for a lot of unis and a lot of courses. Not only if you want to go on to study maths at university, but also subjects like economics, physics, engineering, natural sciences, etc. Further maths is a really good subject to have under your belt. Unis will rarely say they need further maths, but a lot of them would recommend it. And essentially, it's just a good A-level qualification to have for any university subject which is mathematically focused or centered. And the third benefit of the A-level further maths course is that you can just do it for AS and you'll get a qualification at the end. Now, ASs are mainly a thing of the past, but not for further maths. It's the only subject which mainstreamly is still done at AS level, which means you'll sit an exam at the end of year 12, which is worth half an A level. And this is an official qualification that you need to look at and is worth something. So if you do do A level further maths, but you realize it's not your thing, you know, you don't really enjoy it, you don't like the workload, whatever it is, you can just do it at the end of year 12, get a good grade because it's relatively quite easy to do well in the AS, and then drop it. And you've still got that asset for next year for applying to university. And now let's talk about the potential drawbacks of doing further maths A-level. And a potential drawback is kind of the double-edged sword between maths and further maths. So yes, further maths can make maths easier and more manageable, but it can also make A-level maths kind of obsolete at times. And this is a problem mainly if you don't have flexible teachers, that they may just force you to do work you've already done and kind of reteach you stuff you already know and don't need to be retaught. And I definitely felt this to some extent in year 13. You know, I had a lot of maths lessons where I didn't really learn anything, didn't really get much from because I already kind of knew it from further maths or a bit of further work I'd done after further maths. And then another potential disadvantage of doing further maths is that it could be a drawback on your social life. Me personally, I didn't feel this at all, but I know some people do. And the main reason for this is because when in sixth form, and especially when year 12, colleges and teachers only let you take further maths if it's a fourth A level. And for a lot of people, this could be too much. You know, there are some more important things than education and constantly studying. And for some people, it's totally okay, but a fourth A level is just too much. And this may be your case. And if that is true for you, then unfortunately doing A level further maths may not be your thing. But like I said, it's not always a thing. It wasn't a thing for me. And it definitely is manageable you probably just have to be a bit more savvy with your time. So now let's go on to some deciding factors to help you choose whether or not further maths is a good fit for you. So the first deciding factor, which is the most obvious one, is how good are you at maths? Obviously, the easier you find maths, the more naturally the content will come to you, and thus the less work you need to do to achieve the same grade. Even if you're good at maths, you still need to work really hard, but it will make the experience more enjoyable and more manageable. The second big deciding factor is what subject you want to study at university, and I guess also what university you would like to study at. 
So like I said before, if you're studying any of those subjects I mentioned, or even some more, which are kind of mathematically based, then studying A-level further maths may be a good thing for you to do. Also, usually the more academic focused universities are likely to require further maths, so I guess it may be worth checking websites for the universities and courses you want to study to see whether or not further maths is required, suggested, or not at all mentioned. And I guess the third deciding factor is how interested or intrigued you are by maths as a whole. So it is possible for one to be really good at maths, but not really be that like, intrigued or interested. And that means that when you come across something you don't quite understand, something doesn't quite make sense, you may be less likely to stick with it and work at it if you're not that intrigued or interested by it in the first place. On the other hand, if you are really interested by the ideas you're learning and the concepts that surround them, it's much easier and much more enjoyable to work harder, to work for longer, and also to push through when you come across something that doesn't quite make sense, something you don't understand. My big three deciding factors would be how good you are at maths, how intrigued you are by maths, and how much you need further maths in your future. And that draws this video to an end. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know if you have any comments, questions or queries, and I'll see you next week.